Yo, how's it going, everybody? Uh, so, just this uh, last week, uh, Square Enix and Final Fantasy released a new boss deck. If you haven't played Boss Fight, you absolutely should. So, what Boss Fight is, is uh, your opponent has a pre-constructed 80-card deck that is ludicrous. These cards are overpowered as heck. Um, and you play 3v1. So, three players play with constructed level decks like you can play any card in the game against it and i promise you the boss deck will hold its own even the gen 1 boss deck that came out around opus 12 is still able to hold its own against constructed quality decks today um and the new deck the final fantasy 7 one uh, i've just played against it with uh, a constructed deck and i lost against the easy mode so um i want to kind of give some do's and don'ts to kind of help so that you know if you're at your locals the next time, keep a couple extra cards in your binder ready to swap into your main deck. And uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about what to do and what not to do against the boss deck. Uh, do's. Establish roles. Uh, having one person be the control that kind of keeps the boss from killing everybody and one person that scales into a win condition is really, really good. Um, think of it as like you're doing a raid in Final Fantasy XIV. You've got your, your tank uh, who is trying to hold the, the boss in place and you've got your DPS over on the side getting ready to actually, you know, go for the killing blow eventually, but um, you really need to give one player room to do that, and the best way to do that is to have one player dedicated to protecting things. Um, another do, take early damage. Um, the boss knows you're going to get, he's going to get outscaled because the boss is drawing six cards per turn, and, or your players all draw six cards per turn, and the boss only draws four. So even if the boss's cards are more powerful than the players on average, because there's just so much extra card advantage going the player's way, uh, the players will do better than the boss in the long run. That's why the boss starts with a forward and two backups. Uh, lastly, have fun. Like, this is a casual format. You know, don't get mad at anybody. Don't blame anybody if you lose. You know, it, it's this is meant to be a fun thing. This is the closest thing Final Fantasy has to Commander. Think of it like that. Uh, don't. Uh... Be very careful over committing to Amaterasu, Leviathan, Mist Dragon. These are really powerful cards and constructed, but you're setting yourself back very badly when you do this. So if you're the scaling player and you're finding yourself casting these cards a little bit too often, you're not going to scale in time and your your tank is going to end up running out of gas too quickly. Basically, make sure if you're spending money on a summon that that summon is going to do exactly what you need. As opposed to maybe in two turns, you could just Shanto to the board anyway, and the actual the Amaterasu doesn't actually matter. Um, I will say, boss deck is the best teaching tool I've ever seen for not committing over committing before the battle phase. Um, the boss has like 20 EX bursts, and every one of them will win them the game if you overcommit into them. Uh, if what you're doing isn't required before you go to combat, you do it in main phase too. Um, lastly, small thing, if you main deck Neo X death, uh, uh, first of all, you're a horrible, horrible person. I'm joking, joking. Um, but if you have Neo X Death and X Death 18, uh, Opus 18, they don't work. Um, a savvy boss can just choose one of their starting backups to fulfill the requirements of choosing something, but the effect is still considered to be Neo X Death's effect, so they don't leave the field. Um, essentially, Neo X Death is a very expensive 10k forward. Um, there are better cards you can play. Um, Basically, keep a couple extra cards in your binder, swap those in, you'll be fine. Um, so that's kind of like my dues for like how to play against it. But, again, a lot of constructed cards that you would think would be really good are not that good. Um, so I mean, I've got a list of cards that are really, really, really good. Uh, if you can kind of just keep these in a side binder and swap these in when you're playing against a boss deck. Uh, these will give you a chance against even the hard mode boss. Um, yeah, boss text for any deck. I'll try to mention like what cards I would recommend taking out for these. Uh, just because it's a little bit finicky on what cards are good and where. Um, I try to keep a lot of these texts to be relatively cheap. Uh, try to avoid like expensive legends. If you want to like just pick these up for your deck, most of these will be 20 cents to a dollar at most. Maybe some of the legends will be more expensive, but in general, you should be able to pick up playsets of some of the cards pretty cheaply. Um, for fire, uh, first things first, Lonnie is crazy. As it turns out, uh, the boss deck is a lot of good cards, and Lonnie is a free forward, so she becomes a nice little blocker that draws a card from the boss deck. Uh, that's 
incredibly, incredibly potent. Uh, so, so not only do you get this really fun art, uh, you're you're stealing one of the most powerful cards in the game, and it's very likely that you won't have a duplicate of that because uh, that card name. Uh, Jin. So the the great thing about monsters is that the boss deck outside of Sephiroth's exactly doesn't have a lot of monster removal so Jin can kind of hang off to the side and just become an annoying blocker um, becoming a basically an 8k first strike is really annoying for the boss deck to deal with and you're going to take damage anyway just keep a couple extra of these in your binder if you're on a mono fire list pop in the rest of them uh, before uh, Tifa so you don't necessarily want to cast this that often but it is it has the big magic EX word uh, with enough damage to actually kill stuff. And she kind of can do a Jin impression of if you really need blockers or damage in the late game, uh, she can fulfill that for you. Uh, if you have Brynhildr's, swap them out for this Bahamut. Uh, Brynhildr's a fantastic card, but there's no 5 CP cards in the boss deck, or 5k cards in the boss deck, so you're really kind of like having to like combo it with some other source of ping. At that point, you really just want an all-in-one card. Uh, and Bahamut's flexible enough where you can use it in a lot of different ways. In a lot of situations where Brynhildr would be good, this Bahamut can like even like combo with you to kill one thing and then also kill another. Um, if you're on Mono Fire, Alua is a card that the boss deck is going to have to spend a lot of more resources removing than she's spending. Um, pretty self-explanatory. And lastly, uh, this Bahamut's just solid. You're really looking for 8k to 10k on ping, so this is still going to miss some stuff, which is annoying, but... A lot of cards like Squall are going to be really hard to actually get off to get your board wipes. Um, Susano only does 9k, you really want 10. Um, this is just kind of like a big EX burst that does like, enough damage to be relevant without being a card you never cast. Ice. Uh, so Ice has a lot going for it in boss, uh, mainly that you have the ability to slow the game down and boss boards tend to get pretty wide pretty quickly. Uh, first things first, boss deck does not have a lot of ways to interact with Yuna, so they're going to keep their best forward, but you're still going to be providing a lot of damage for your team. Um, even if Yuna is just a 3 CP forward that locks down 3 forwards for 2 turns and then takes the hit from the other one, she's done her job at that point. Um, the special is also like the only good removal on ice for stuff something like this, like you could maybe consider that as well, like as another way of doing it. Uh, she's a rare, she'll cost you nothing, but uh, she's a very bad constructed card that really shines in a format like this, where you don't actually have to supply the actual removal for the card you're doling. Uh, Laswell and Hurdy, uh, I can hear Travis smiling off in the distance. Um, Laswell is just a really good rate for the ability to lock down. Shockingly, you'd use it on a forward in this instance, but um, it's just a... 2 CP dull freeze with upside basically prevents can, it prevents two points of damage essentially. Um, Hurdy's the same thing. Uh, the cap on 2 CP backups is not very high, so being able to just crack a 2 CP backup during your opponent's turn to like save your team from dying is just always going to be worth it. Uh, Biblos does the same thing as Jin, uh, except Biblos is a card you actually might attack with. Um, Especially with the Sephiroth boss deck, you really need to be careful of your opponent having Sephiroth in hand. So ripping cards from hand, dulling and freezing forward, so you're taking less damage over the next two turns. Uh, it just does a really good job of doing what you need to. Um, Zolera, this is some of the most efficiently costed... I mean, it's hard to be more efficiently costed than one, but a 1 CP outright break. Um, this is going to miss some cards in the boss deck, but the ones it doesn't miss, you will be the most efficient way of killing in the deck. Or for your team. Uh, lastly... Arcanist. Oh my goodness. Um, there are so many cards in the boss deck that are costed very similarly. If you can get down two Arcanist, uh, three Ar you know, two Arcanist down, you can go like pitch an ice card from hand and do this, and the boss deck is just going to cry. Um, you're going to be able to slow the boss deck down, give your, your team time to scale, prevent the best on attack triggers. Just one of the best cards, just period, for any setting like this. Uh, wind. Uh, everything I said about Lonnie is even truer for Zidane. Uh, Leafkin. You know, Opus 18 common. Uh, because you're expected to take damage early, Leafkin is probably the most efficient way to get out a uh, 5 or 6 EP forward in the mid-late. This is just 
pure value once he comes in. Uh, Iris, uh, I think that a lot of really powerful cards are going to be, you know, public enemy number one, and a lot of the most common ways of killing those is going to be uh, your opponent trying to outright target them with an ability. Uh, Iris says no to that. Uh, Null, same thing. Uh, this forces the boss to deal with a card on your turn. Otherwise, you're going to con get continued value from this. Um, Kelger is a good defensive card. It kind of forces. It's another card that forces the boss to have an answer. Same for Garuda. So many of the boss's cards are very high power. And that draw is not once per turn. So they have to remove this. But a lot of the ways they're going to remove it are going to be to play another expensive card. Uh, so I think Kelgar and Garda are very easy cards you can slot in. Um, as far as win cards that are not as good against the boss deck, uh, Bismarck I think loses a little bit of value. He's just a little bit too clunky and expensive to get to. Um, a lot of stuff like uh, if you're playing a constructed list, Luso, maybe you don't have time for that, especially because uh, Luso usually requires you to get very specific backups down, and backup hate's a lot more common in the boss deck. But yeah, those are the my recommendations for just kind of cards to have lying around, ready to go. Uh, for Earth, uh, Tama is really good. Um, it's unfortunate she can't help allies, but again, being able to, to protect anything from a specific targeted ability is really nice. And Tama interacts really favorably with stuff like uh, choosing abilities. So if your opponent has something that does multi-targeting, uh, Tama can just say no to all of it. Um, the only thing about her is you got to be careful about cleave effects because she is a very small body. Uh, Galif. Galif's a little tricky. Uh, I will straight up admit that. Uh, there are plenty of ways to outright break Galif, but it's the most, it's the only perpetual removal in Earth that can do his job with no outside help. Uh, you can swing Galif, starting at damage 3, and break any forward the boss deck has. And I think that that's valuable enough, because it, it demands the boss has an answer to your forward. Uh, Duke Snakeheart, very cheap Opus 17 rare. It is 2 CP, kill a guy, uh, which is more than enough to be worth it. Um, Arciella, uh, Arciella helps skew the combat math back in your favor. There's a weird problem against the boss deck where all the boss's cards are much bigger than the player's forwards. Um, Arcella kind of gives you a chance and kind of levels the playing field a little bit against them. Uh, Zeramus the Condemner I think is probably the best EX burst summon you can go for. Uh, unfortunately, your opponent chooses the best option for them, but it's... One of the things you're really looking for with your EX burst in boss fight is you want to go two for one. Um, so Zeramus the Condemner essentially draws you a card and kills a forward. There's not a lot of other EX bursts that are going to do that for you. Um, lastly, this is more Earth Lightning specific, but it's also just you can probably find room to color fix this in normal Earth, but Sonin is really good in boss fight. Um, you really want to give the boss as little time as possible to plan, so back attack is really strong against him. And... Sonin actually has the ability to win to skew combat math again in your favor. Uh, you can maybe block with something, kill one thing, get through another, have Sonin block another. Um, it's just a very good card at, at preventing you from dying, which is kind of what you really need. Uh, Lightning. Lightning is really good in boss fights. So, um, first things first, Thunder Drake. Any 2 CP forward that you can trade with a Thunder Drake is money in the bank. Uh, you have a 2CP 6k blocker for later on in the game. You kill a forward they control. Um, if you ever clear the way, Thunder Drake is really hard for the boss to remove efficiently. Uh, Melusine. Same thing, Melusine is really good removal. Lots of boss cards have haste or really powerful action abilities. Um, I'm going to laugh at the day that someone steals a, a uh, Sephiroth from the boss and then just starts octo-slashing him. Like, that just sounds hilarious to me. Uh, one thing that I think is uh, a little bit interesting, so I'm not going to recommend that you build these archetypes, but Scions and Waltzes, or Black Mages, are really good against the boss deck. Um, 
the Thancred Ishtola combo is very good, and Ishtola is a very efficient board wipe if she comes down. Um, Scions also love taking damage. The boss is forced to do damage just based on the way the game plays out. Uh, Lilith. Lilith is extremely efficient in removal. Um, if you combine Lilith with Nelisine, then you have effectively a remove from game of one of your opponent's forwards and a break of one of your opponent's forwards, as long as you're willing to remove your Melusine. Um And then you have Odin. Odin's just a really good summon. Um, this is very aggressively costed. You're okay getting damage 5 against the boss a lot of the time. Breaking a, a forward for 2 CP is worth it. And you're really looking for this EX burst that'll help you stabilize in the early game. Uh, a couple other ones. Sid Sophiar. Um, I wanted to kind of pull up some backups. Uh, 2 CP EX burst with upside. Hard to complain about. A lot of early forwards that come down, you're not going to have the way to remove efficiently. Heidegger gives you that. You know, 4 CP break something is definitely solid, especially when you have the ability to kind of cash them out later for another forward in the deck. Uh, lastly, Yuk. Um, this whole cycle of backups is really good in boss fight in general. Uh, 10k ping, draw two cards, make the boss discard two. Uh, all of your forwards are 10k brave. Like, every one of these effects is good, but, you know, just generic removal will never be bad, um, especially against the boss. And Outright Break is really strong in boss fight. Uh, water's in a weird spot because I think Water wants to play really differently than it normal do normally does. Um, I would be scared to go for uh, Ash, just given how much backup hate the 7 deck has. So I would focus on cards like these. Um, Renoa. It's funny because I, I wasn't a huge fan of this card in uh, in Standard, and I'm still not. But in Boss Fight, being able to pay one for removal, you're going to need removal in two turns no matter what. So you kind of can get a discount there that also like has a really solid special. And you can break anything for 2 CP, essentially, as long as you play a couple of like decently chunky forwards in your deck. Um, Echidna, any any monster that can animate itself on your opponent's turn is really solid. Um, Echidna is effectively a free one. Uh, Glacella, a little hard to keep the forwards on field sometimes for her, but even still, um, it's the, the rate for removal with Glacella is just unparalleled. Um, Alfino, you will resolve more damage 5 triggers in boss fight than you ever thought possible. Uh, Mind Flayer against the boss is hilarious. Um, they did not expect you to be able to, to pick the best two cards that your bo the boss deck has. Spam this as much as you can. Uh, Blue Worm, same thing as Thunder Drake, just drawing a card instead of breaking a forward. Leviathan, uh, this is better than Remora most of the time just because the boss forwards are so expensive, or so big. This guarantees gets them off the field and draws you a card. Uh, lose off. This is another one that, again, you're kind of able to sneak in this backup to both protect a forward you control and kill something your opponent does. Really, really powerful in the right situation. And lastly, Hilda, for the same reason as Alfino, you're kind of looking for good EX burst with upside. This is one that, it's an EX burst if it goes to damage. You don't mind casting this early as a 2 CP backup. But if you can hold on to her, then she's a 2 CP backup that also plays a forward and breaks it onto the field. Just very, very nice. Uh, light Dark, I think, is harder to tech for, but I know a lot of people will probably have like a Neo X Death slot or like a Kadage slot. And Kadage isn't great against the boss. So these are my recommended replacements. Um, if you have Kadage, just slot in a Lightning instead. Uh, this Lightning's entire goal is to say that you don't want to die. So being able to put a big. 4 CP 9k that's a little hard for the boss to remove that if she does live starts doing stuff great EX burst um, she can kind of turn off some damage uh, we can use chaos to beat chaos as it turns out there's just a lot of situations where uh, any backup early is probably fine as long as you're okay with having you know un dark CP from it and then in the late game, being able to just remove the biggest threat for 3 CP, or 4 CP, is actually quite good. You know, it's removed from game, 
Uh, it's character, so if you have to hit a backup, you can. Just lots of really good things. Uh, this cloud is really good because he can either search himself if you have multiples, or you know get you a backup, get you a UV. Um, but he's also just removal. Uh, removing seven cards of your deck from the game is not a problem. Boss fight, you're very rarely going to go to deck out, just the way the game goes. And uh, yeah, he's a below curve forward with uh, removal stapled on. Um, lastly, uh, it's a bit of a build around, but this wall is pretty solid in boss fight as well. You have to have enough Warriors of Light to do the thing with them, but you're expecting him to die at some point. Uh, so if he does, uh, this would be what I would run any deck that's running like a Ferris package. You can pretty reliably hit both sides of this and get value out of it. Um, so yeah, that is uh, all my main techs. Uh, I'm trying to think like what card, what other cards I would remove that are like very commonly played in standard. Um, let's go to FF decks. Uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna go to a decently big. This seems like a decent one. Um, Tidus is really good. I shouldn't recommend him because he's expensive. Yeah, Ash is going to be a lot weaker in this, just given the uh, difficulty of keeping backups on field. Uh, Kakoan would be good against the boss. I would be a little bit careful about Octo Mammoth, I feel like, would be a little bit worse. Any of those backups that required you to have multiple backups, a lot of times you just don't have time to get them down if you have to be the uh, protection. Um, yeah, remember to swap out your X stats if you're on this. Uh, Vanille just will not come up enough. So like Earth Lightning really kind of is in a, a bit of, of a weird place. Uh, this Ramu just does not quite do enough damage. Ixian's really good. Ixian's really really good. Just a very cheap board wipe. Uh, Man in Black can be hard to get value from, but he does give you a bit of a late game win con. Uh, yeah, that seems decent. Yuffie's a bit of a strange one, but because you know Yuffie does have ways of killing her on the stack, but she is also a very large blocker that can be kind of hard to deal with. Um, I would be very careful if you're playing Mono Wind about your backup lineup. Uh, Mono Wind tends to be very slim on backups, which makes it very rough sometimes if they uh, start getting their backups hit. So just be mindful of that. Um, Uh, be very careful with Palum and Porum. Uh, they're just really small early, which can make, make them easy to remove. And uh, Palum just doesn't do enough. Porum's just a good card in general, but I wouldn't expect them to stick around very long. Yeah, Brynhildr doesn't do enough damage. Keep it out. Uh... Yeah, I would probably swap the uh, Leviathan Rare there. Um, be careful of self-damage effects. You really don't want to be the one that scares your team into making bad decisions early because you took some early damage. Um, this Cloud of Darkness is really good in boss deck. Or boss fight as well. It's very easy for you to be on one one uh, forward and the boss to be on multiple. Um, but yeah. Hopefully uh, with some of these little spicy tech options you'll be able to get through the boss. Uh... Probably we'll go through and give an actual full breakdown of the boss deck once it's a little easier to get some pictures of it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.